YouTubers. Okay. Revelation 10. Uh, you know how it says uh, that the angel gave John a little book? You know, 10.9 says, I went to the angel and said to him, Give me the little book. And he said to me, Take it and eat it, and it will be... Uh, it will make your stomach bitter, but it in, uh, it will be as sweet as honey in your mouth. So, it's a little book. <laughs> okay. The reason I'm acting all goofy is because, like, man, prophecy like you've never seen in your life has come to pass. It's happening. Like... The, the the words are jumping off the page, okay? Now look, Revelation 13 talks about the Antichrist, the Mark of the Beast, the false prophet, right? I find it interesting that it's 2013 and this stuff seems to be coming to pass. You know, I'm not saying that, you know, it's in the fullness, but I think it's being revealed, Look at this. I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. This is Revelation 13, 11. And he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. He exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he granted to which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. You know, there's more you can read on there. Um, you know, I believe that this verse is talking about the false prophet, verse 16 specifically. I mean, it says that he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave to receive a mark this is the new king james it says on their right hand on their foreheads but the king james says in their right hand in their foreheads where do you put an rfid boom why do you put one in the forehead well you know what if you ain't got hands it's happened so the man of the year the false prophet you know how you know? Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. This guy's been making some waves. Um, I've seen him make statements that make it sound like it really kind of blurs the lines. You know? That's what the devil's an expert at. He takes, uh, he takes things, and he kind of, you know, a little compromise here, a little compromise there, you know, a little leaven leavens the whole lump, you know. But I've heard him say things that, that sound, as if it, you know, means that homosexuals are accepted into heaven, or that atheists are already redeemed. Um, you know, I've seen an article where he's committed the uh committed to the church to the holy mother you know mary kind of stuff you know this guy is total uh poison to the true gospel and he looks like a lamb because jesus was the lamb he has an image like the lamb you know he comes off as being humble comes off as being like a servant kind of guy but this little book this bible so it says that he speaks like a dragon. But the man of the year has little horns like a lamb. Time is so short. Time is so, so short. If this stuff is coming to pass, they're planning on dividing Israel in the spring. There's lunar tetrads in the spring. And every time those have happened before, it's been a major, major event for Israel. So if they're dividing Israel in the spring or at least attempting to, that means the judgment is very close. Because Zechariah chapter 12 says that the nation, that or anyone,
that tries to divide Israel will be divided. So America's leading the charge on that, and I fully believe that America is Babylon. Read Revelation 18. Read uh, Jeremiah 50, 51. You know, it's clear. When you, when you take those scriptures and you look at it in the context of it being America, it is so crystal clear. But Revelation 18 says that Babylon, you know, in one hour their judgment has come. Just like Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, we've even got this comet Ison coming by where we're going to go right through the tail of this thing. We're going through the debris of this thing because the Bible says that in the end times, you know, especially before the coming of Jesus Christ, that the, the, the stars of heaven are going to drop like figs falling from a tree shaken by a mighty wind. So, you know, maybe, uh, maybe December, January isn't the fire and brimstone, but it's certainly, you know, the stars falling from heaven as a warning that it's really, it's about to go down. I mean, if we have literally a few months before the tribulation starts, how sure are you of your salvation? You know, the Bible does say that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And that anybody that calls on the name of the Lord will not be ashamed. But it also says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. That the old things have passed away and all things have become new. So you need to meet both criteria. You can confess and believe, but does your life show being born again? Does your life show the results of that salvation? Are you living in righteousness? That's the bottom line. You know, if Jesus is in your life, then you have a desire for righteousness. You turn away from sin, you repent. So, so serious. This is the end. We are on the like the last minutes. And don't just sit around and argue with other Christians, you know. So many Christians are wasting their time arguing about when the rapture is, arguing about this doctrine, that doctrine. Go tell somebody the gospel. Jesus said in the Great Commission, you know, go preach the gospel to every creature. He didn't say, go, you know, go beat every Christian over the head with your doctrine because you're right and they're wrong. You know, be careful not to get in pride. You know, love your brother, love your neighbor as yourself. You know, if you're loving your neighbor as yourself, you make videos against him saying, whoop, this guy's a total fraud and he's, a, and he's going to hell and he's teaching and he's a false teacher. Blah, blah, blah. The church has become so cannibalistic. You know, we're the body of Christ. Stop eating yourself. All right? Love your neighbor as yourself. Preach the gospel to somebody. If the time is this short, you need to tell somebody. Because if you keep your mouth shut, you know, look at what happened to the guy with one talent that buried it in the ground, and when his master came back, he gave him his talent back and said that he was afraid. And the master cast that wicked servant into hell, weeping and gnashing of teeth. So, preach the gospel, you know. Uh, yeah, we're saved by faith, but Abraham believed God, and he obeyed God to sacrifice his son, even though God said, well, out of you, I will uh, make you a father of many nations. Noah, even though he believed by faith, he obeyed, and he built the ark. So faith, there's action with it. Faith produces action. If you believe, then you got to be a doer of the word. The Bible says, don't, you know, the Bible says be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourself. Do the word. Be righteous. Help somebody out. Preach the gospel. Love your neighbor. And watch. Because Jesus is coming. Yeah. God bless.
I love that. I love it. <laughs>